Zero accounting software. Check form or spend money form. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our personal Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation. Gonna scroll in a little bit by holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel. I'm at 175% on the zoom in. We will be opening up the company file, but I'm first gonna reset the data so that it will not be including anything we did in prior presentations. And then it will open up the demo file. Have I mentioned that I love the reset capability in the practice and demo version of Zero? I do if I've missed that. I'm gonna hide this item over here. We're gonna be opening up the major two financial statement reports by opening new tabs and then the reports within them. Right clicking on the tab up top to duplicate it. Then I'm gonna right click on the duplicated tab and duplicate it again, the double duplication. Going into the middle tab, I'm gonna open up our reports. In the accounting dropdown, we're looking at reports. I wanna be opening up the balance sheet report that's one of our favorites it should it must be in the favorite reports if you don't have the balance sheet as a favorite report then you know there's something wrong with you you're not thinking right and then we're going to go into the accounting again open up the reports again and the income statement as well the profit and loss the p to the l we're going to open that one up back to the balance sheet going to change the date on the range change in the range and i'm going to bring that up to 2022 that's my current data field and so those are two reports i open that up every time and i always work on that first uh, file here or the first tab i should say so now we're just going to look at the standard check form so you'll recall in prior presentations we've been thinking about these types of forms related to in in the end the out the outflow of cash so you can call that the vendor cycle the expenses cycle the purchases cycle so uh, now we're gonna be looking at the standard or easiest way to be having or pay for expenses. And that's just gonna be basically a check type form or a spend money type form. So the forms we've been looking at, bill form, we looked at the purchase order form. These are involved with the purchasing of inventory. And then we now are gonna be looking at the spend money form. Now, just a quick recap of a flow chart to see how the vendor cycle might work. I'm gonna go back on over to our flow chart over here. We're in the vendor cycle, noting that if money is going out, we're paying from the business for goods and services. The easiest way to do that is with the check form. So, which you can also just call a money out form, the form that decreases the checking account. So you can think of them as different variations for the type of payment you're making, like a transfer versus a check and so on. But really, from a data input standpoint, they're all the type of form that decreases, in essence, uh, the checking account. Now, there is a difference between actually handwriting or manually writing the checks and sending out, mailing out checks to be paying for something, because at that time, you wanna make sure that you're actually entering the check in the system as you write it, because you would like to be able to track whether or not it is outstanding, meaning you wrote it it's gonna take some time for it to clear the bank in order to verify. However, if you do electronic transfers, it's still, if you have a full service accounting system, best to enter the transfer on your side and then wait till it clears the bank to do a bank reconciliation or possibly match with the bank feeds, in a, uh, which will help you to do the bank reconciliation. However, many small businesses would, would prefer simply to just wait till it clears the bank since there's not a big gap between the transaction taking place and it clearing the bank. So in that case, you're kind of eliminating the double check that you get in the internal control of you entering the data and then checking it to the bank, but it's easier that way. So we'll, hopefully we'll have a whole section on bank feeds. We'll talk about them more in the future, but I just wanna mention that now as we look at the check form. 
And then we've been looking at the accrual forms, which was the bill form, increasing the accounts payable. Then we pay the bill with, in essence, a type of check form, but a specific form that's decreasing the checking account, but also always decreasing the accounts payable. And then we talked about a purchase order and a bill when we were having the inventory. Now we're going to like the easiest thing, just the check form. And remember, the, the check form or decrease of the checking account form, whatever form you want to call it, the data input form is in essence what will generally be created if you were to try to construct your books just simply using the bank feeds. You're still going to be constructing in essence a type of data input form from the data provided from the bank feeds, which in essence for money going out would usually be, you would think, the check form. Again, we'll talk more about that hopefully when we get to a bank feed section in and of itself. Now to get to the check form, the easiest way is probably just go to the plus button up top and we're gonna go to the spend money item, spend money item. And then typically it's gonna come out, of course, the checking accounts. So we're gonna have a, we're going to have to have a checking account set up typically to be using a check type of form. Gonna go into the check form and then we could say, this is gonna go to, I set up like my, my another vendor, AAA vendor. So it'll be at the top of the list. And then here's the date will populate typically automatically if you're working in our real time. Also just note that normally we'll be on the direct pay. So maybe we'll spend some time to look at the prepay and overpayment. But usually when you look at the spend money form, generally you're looking at the direct pay. And then down below, if we have the items, this would be when we're paying for say inventory items. So we talked about inventory items with a bill. If we don't have an item that we're paying for, then we can add a description. We might just add like the quantity and the uh, the price, which I'm just gonna say is like 400. And then let's just pretend that it was like for the utility bill or something. Utility, utilities right there. And it would just be like a normal type of expense. If you have a region, then you could set up or, or distinguish the reason, the region. And of course, this would simply be then recording a decrease to the checking account and the other side going to this utilities here. If we assigned an item, then it would be increasing the inventory most likely depending on how the item was set up and also give us a tracking of the sub ledger, the units of items that we're purchasing that would be driven by once again, uh, those items. Also note that if it was a check, we could have the reference number and a check. Remember that this form is basically the form used to decrease the checking account, whether being a check or say electronic transfer type of form. Also, we could attach an attachment to it if we wanted some other information related to it that can be tagged there in terms of a reference if we needed to go through an audit trail in uh, the future or something like that. Note also, you have this option down here of assigning expense to a customer. So if you were to think about this option, that would be the concept of we have an expense that we are creating here, but we're doing it in such a way that it's for like a job or something like that. And we wanna basically uh, include it or bill for it when we actually turn around and get on the revenue side of things and include this possibly in an invoice. I won't get into more detail on that at this point, but just realize you that's what that button is. That's where you could have some capacity there. So then you can go to add in another or just save. Let's go ahead and just save it here. So I'm gonna save that, see the impact on our financial statements by going to the balance sheet. I'm gonna update the balance sheet and go on down. Now notice our checking account is not in the assets as it should be normally because it's overdrawn, meaning we owe the bank money. So it's down here in the checking account. So don't let that throw you off. It's just because it's overdrawn. So now we're gonna go into the liability of the checking account. And then I'm gonna scroll down to uh, December. Note that the checking account has the most activity in it because obviously the cash is like the, the, the lifeblood of the company. So you have our spend money form. So there it is, the spend money form. And if you go into that, it'll drill back down to the source document, with it, which is great. If you wanted to edit it, you can hit the drop down and edit the transaction thusly. And so now it looks like that data input form that we were that we put together. So uh, then I'm going to go back and let's go back again. And so then we're on the let's go back one more time. The other side we put to the profit and loss or income statement. So that's in the second or the last tab over here. Let's update it 
and we uh, put that into just utilities account. So it's an expense account. So there it is. Notice this would be the easiest kind of transaction to do with, in essence, bank feeds uh, and just rely on the bank feeds to do the transaction. And the bank feed would generally still make some kind of money out form like a spend money type form. It would just be used partially from the data we got that was imported from the bank feeds. So notice when you have a bill or accrual kind of system and you're tracking accounts payable, that makes the bank feeds a little bit uh, more difficult or a little bit more complex in terms of how you're going to put that bank feed into your system. So if we go back to the first tab, we can also take a look at the contact information. So I'm gonna look at all contacts. Notice you have the drop down here because I'm scrolled in. If I scroll back out, you'll have the headers up top. If I scroll in just a bit more to 175, then it gets the drop down. So you can see how the, the website is adjusting due to the size of the screen. If I look at all of them and I type in AAA, and so there we have our contact. And obviously there's nothing due at this point in time because we paid it with just basically a check type form rather than entering a bill but we can still see the activity down here. And that's important when you do your bank feeds as well, because it might be possible to enter the transactions without entering a, a vendor uh, the, who, who you paid, but you still wanna do that even though you can still construct the, the financial statements without that, because it gives you an added level of detail to sort your information by. Notice that you can also look at this information from your registers. So if I went to the accounting dropdown, and I took a look at the chart of accounts, the underlying accounts, and I was to say, I'm gonna scroll in just a bit to look at the checking account. If I click on the balance here, which you can see is overdrawn, then it gives you kind of a running balance, kind of like a check register balance. This is similar to the detail that you would see when you go into the detail of the report by going to the, the balance sheet and then finding the checking account, which is a liability because it's overdrawn and clicking on it where you get you know that detail uh, report of your activity by date hopefully in future presentations we'll talk more about kind of how to sort and filter some of the reports a little bit more but you got your filtering options up here we'll talk about that later so i'm going to go back and go back whoop that's let's i went back too far let's go back one more okay so then let's make another one if i make a check and say let's say we're going to do the spend money and let's go from the checking account and let's say it's going to go to AAA again just to make it easy so we could find them but this time you purchased an inventory item so now we're purchasing inventory it'll populate basically automatically for us and it'll do the same thing in terms of a check it's going to decrease the checking account the other side this time however it's going to be driven by the item which is going to put it here to the inventory account and the sub ledger for inventory will be impacted as well, tracking inventory, not only by dollar amount we spent, but also by the inventory items on a perpetual inventory system. So if I was to save that and check it out, go back to the balance sheet, update, we're gonna have the decrease to the checking account, but now we can see it added to the inventory. So that's the same thing we saw with the bill. It's just this time we paid it directly with the money out from the uh, spend money form going back i'm going to go to the last tab right click on it duplicate it and just to note that we can also see in the uh, accounting and reports if i type in the inventory and we go into the inventory item summary report then we can go in and we could see the activity here giving us some more support about what the thing we bought is so this report's giving us more detail about a balance sheet line item of the inventory okay so let's go back to the first tab i just want to touch on hitting the drop down here and do another spend money form we're going to go into the checking account and next and now we just want to note that up top usually we're using the direct pay but i just want to touch on the prepayment and overpayment items here let's first look at the prepayment now if you're an accountant and you hear the term prepayment you're probably thinking like adjusting journal entries something possibly related to insurance because insurance is something that we have to pay for before we actually get it unlike something like utilities where we usually pay for it after we get the service of the utilities. Therefore, we oftentimes put the prepayment on the books as an asset when we pay for it. 
and then allocate it to an expense using adjusting entries as we consume it. But another, this form here might be used for a situation where you're making a payment before you actually receive the bill and then you expect to receive the bill later matching the bill to the payment. So let's kind of think about it in that scenario. Let's say we have an AAA is just, we're just gonna use that as our uh, vendor. We're gonna keep the date that looks good and we're just gonna be a normal payment type of form. And then in the, in the items down below, I'm gonna say quantity one, let's just say it's for 1000. And then the account, like I say, if it was a insurance or something like that, then usually we would put it into prepaid insurance, an asset uh, type of type of account. But let's say here that I'm just using this prepayment form so that we can enter the enter the payment before I actually received the bill. And then I'm going to match the prepayment I made already to the bill I expect to see in the future. So maybe they're saying, hey, you didn't pay us. And we say, hey, we don't got the bill. We didn't get the bill. Well, you owe us a thousand dollars. Well, I'll pay you a thousand dollars, but send me the bill so I can enter whatever added information on the bill is into the system or possibly attach the bill or whatever I need to do with it. So let's just put it to an expense. Let's put it to like, let's put it to like uh, uh, utilities or whatever expense account and you and treat it in that fashion. So this is going to still record the transaction, decreasing the checking account the other side going to utilities. So I'm going to save it and just double check that. Go into the account here. I'm going to go back. This should be the balance sheet. Let's go back to the balance sheet. I'm going to update it. And then we're going to say in the checking account, we should have a decrease in December. $1,000 for that AAA down here. So we've got, there it is there. It's a, it's a, a uh, payable prepayment type of form that we use. So I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go into the income statement and refresh or update that. And we can scroll on down and the utilities here. If I go into the utilities, we just posted it to utilities. So I'm not really doing the prepayment thing in terms of the adjusting journal entry. I just posted it to the expense account here. So I'm not using that adjusting journal entry concept instead what I'm going, what I'm using this for is to go back to the first tab and then I'm going to go to the business dropdown and look at my bills that I need to pay. You'll note that I've got this AAA thing up here. So if I, and I can also see that if I go to my, my uh, contacts and I go to, let's just go to all contacts and look up AAA, AAA here and then go into that. So now we've got our information. We got the spend money, spend money, and then this prepayment item. Okay, so let's find it in the in the bills again. So this would be helpful. So I can talk. I can show that if I'm talking to the vendor and say, "Hey, yeah, I've got this prepayment thing. I still need the bill because I want to match it up to the bill." Is my my thought process here? So I'm going to hit the drop down and see it this way. In uh, where was I? Pay bills. And then I'm, I'm going to go into it. Now I could go to the bottom. You could use this, for example, if they're going to refund you the money and then you can, and then you can, you can pay them something and they're going to refund it back. So you have this item down below to do that. Or I'm going to go back. If they give me the bill, I can hit the drop down and enter the bill into the system. And I'm going to say that's from AAA on the bill. And then the item, it's not going to be an item. I'm just going to say one and the unit price 1000. I'm going to say that it goes to that same utilities, utilities account. And then I, I can attach now that I imagine that I got the bill from them. I can put any added detail up there that I need or add a memo or whatever I need to do with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and approve the bill and it's going to say that Let's see that I should have a reconciling item. So it has a $1,000 in outstanding credit. Would you like to allocate that to the bill? So I'm going to say yes, allocate the credit to the bill. So it, now it should match that out. So the credit here, it is outstanding credit amount uh, to credit. We're going to say 1000 and then so amount 
due on bill, 1,000. Total amount credit, 1,000. So I'm gonna allocate that out. And so now we've got that allocation. So now if I go to my drop down and the bills to pay item, we've got these two hopefully tying out, matching out here. And if I go into the contact information, all contacts, and I look up AAA and go into that information, they should be paid off here. So you got, you've got that information on down below with it there as well. Now, then if I go to the income statement, you might say, well, did I double record something here? If I go to the income statement and scroll down to the utilities, we could see how it's been recorded in the utilities because we entered basically a payment in here and then the bill, but then we said the bill was, was gonna allocate that prepayment. So you can see down here that we have the activity with the prepayment that we put into here. And then we've got the invoice, the payable invoice, in essence, the bill that we created and the, the prepayment allocation has been allocated. So it's been increased and decreased, taken back out. So it's, it looks like it's been recorded properly. And so that's how you might, one way that you might use that, uh, that, that format if, if you're getting a bill in the, that's going to be received in the future. The other way that you might use it that I can imagine here would be if you go to the spend money and I go from the checking account and let's just run a, another similar scenario, but instead of using the prepayment, I'm going to use the overpayment. So again, the, this might be something where they're saying, hey, look, you owe us money. And we say, well, I didn't get, I don't have the detail. You didn't give me the bill or something like that. But now I don't even know what it is I'm supposed to allocate the money to because I don't have the bill or something like that. So I don't want to hit an expense account. So I'm just going to say, let's make another one like BBB this time. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm just going to pay you the w whatever, the $2,000 that I owe you. And it's just going to go into a credit to the accounts payable so that, so that, and then when I get the bill later, I can enter it, or if it's going to be refunded to me, I can allocate it out. So if I record it that way and say, okay, let's save that and see what that does. And I go to my, uh, let's go, this is my income statement. Where'd my balance sheet go? I went over my balance sheet here. I'm going to make my balance sheet again, accounting reports. Let's go into my balance sheet. And then I'm going to scroll down and say, okay, the checking account, I got to change the dates. Okay. So now the checking account down here should have gone down. So if I go into the checking account and I'm looking for BBB sometime in December, we're going to say, there it is. There's the 2000. The other side went to the accounts payable and it's in an overpayment. So I'm going to go back. So this time we didn't hit the income statement at all, even though we paid the money, we just said, Hey, look, we overpaid the payable account. So now the accounts payable showing that we owe money to vendors has an overpayment that we can apply out directly. So if I scroll this back down, we're going to say there's the overpayment. If I go back to the first tab, we can search that by the contacts, all contacts. This is the BBB. And so there it is. If I go into that item, then now we have this overpayment. If I go into the drop down up top and I look at the pay bills, bills to pay, I've got that item here. Now, if they're going to refund me the money back and I gave them the money, they're going to give it back. Then I can record that down below or if I then got a bill from them, I can apply this overpayment out to them that way. So I'm going to say, okay, let's just make a bill and let's say, okay, you finally gave me the bill that now I can, I already paid you. I don't know where the bill was before, but whatever. So now we're going to say that they billed us for one, $2,000, whatever thing expense. So we're just going to call it general expense. Okay. And so then I'm going to say record the bill, which would normally increase accounts payable, but it's saying, Hey, you've got this allocated credit. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's allocate that out, allocate the credit. And so there we have it. So now those two things should match up thusly. So if I go back to the business drop down and we take a look at the bills to pay, you've got those two things 
you know, should be tied out and connected out, ready to go. And if I go into the contacts, all contact, looking at BBB detail, then we've got then the bill paid and the overpayment hopefully connecting out properly there. So those are some ways you might use those. Again, you don't, probably don't use those nearly that often, but just want to touch on them.